What's up, what's up? It's a Spiracle, and welcome back to Let's Meet Adam. It's been a little bit. It's been like a week. But, um, I wanted to get back into it and see what's going on with the guys. They're, like, dying. Whatever. Load. This foyer looked a lot like the first, complete with a TV screen, stains and all. Except there were four doors this time, all lined up side by side. The room itself was tight, but big enough that able was, everyone was able to walk around comfortably. Each one of the men stood peering around, a sense of uncertainty heavy a sense of a sense of uncertainty heavily weighed down the atmosphere. I I still can't believe what just happened. That man was a good man. I like to think things like that can't happen to good people like him. But now Bart, I understand. Karma is real. Justice is real. Bad people will get what they deserve. I hear ya. And we will figure this out. Vince. For a guy who doesn't say much, you do have a way with words. Why is that? Let us in on what's inside that noggin of yours. Well, I've known Vince for a short while and I think we got close pretty fast. But it's true I've never really asked Vince about that myself. Although I've for sure wondered about it. He looks pretty embarrassed being put on the spot, but in an endearing way. I like his hair. I'm thinking about, like, getting a haircut like that. Like an undercut? Sorry. Uh, I, I came from a big Latino family. Everyone fighting for attention. Saying anything to be heard or noticed. I felt like I was always saying the wrong things. Sometimes I think people don't like what they hear coming out of my mouth. As the others started inspecting the doors, Vince clears his throat before he speaks again. <clears throat> Dude, do you think the killer will really set us free? Bart, let, Bart lets out a grunt, and I see some of the others turned around in response. You mean, even if we solve all the puzzles and get it, make it to the end? Steve starts to fidget nervously while some of the others look to us for reassurance. I guess I never really thought of that. Well, he won't be able to stop us after I've ripped his goddamn head off. I let out a sad chuckle. Honestly, if it was you, Bard, I don't doubt you could do it with your bare hands. Vince makes a good point. What if we aren't meant to win this game? Like it's rigged? Exactly. I hate how we got- I hate how we got no choice regardless. That's pretty bullshit if you ask me. No, calm down, guys. Like Bart said, we have no other choice. We'll have to play along until we find out. We'll, we just have to play the game better than Goatman can. Is that what we're calling that freak now? Seems fitting to me. Yeah. I want to throw something out there, too. Since you guys brought up Goatman, I've seen movies and shit before. This Goatman, he's got to be one of us. That would be true, genius, except that when we all saw him, everyone here was accounted for. Well, I don't know, that's just how these things usually go. Um, well, Pierce might be onto something. Classically, we've all seen this happen before. In new scary movies like Hacksaw and in video games, the killer's always one of the people in the group. Or let's have de a defeated sigh, not wanting to believe the stereotypical tropes might be in effect. Even in old black and white cinema, it's true. The culprits are probably one of the guests. A few of the men instinctively take a, di a step away from each other. The level of dread and mistrust rising incrementally. As usual, the only one who didn't seem to take it seriously was Kang. Yeah, usually the psycho in the mask is one of the other teenagers faking being nice. Because they want to be in it at ground zero, watching the shit go down. Normally, I'd never agree with anything you say, Pierce. I don't think we should jump to conclusions, but you should- you could have a point. But what you're saying is that the killer, the person responsible, is here. That the killer is one of us. God, I don't want to consider that right now. Y yeah I think we should focus on working together. Once again, everyone goes silent and they break off into singular and little groupings. The static from the TV seems to sound louder and louder. It looks chaotic, sadly fitting the situation. 
while a red light blinks threateningly near the frame's lower left corner. As if on cue, Kang speaks up, his voice calm and, calm and velvety. Calm and velvety! Oh, man. <laughs> calm and velvety. I've been pondering something since that previous room as well. The last I planned ever to speak of that place, as I'll never be able to forget such a mortifying scene. Why doesn't our graceful host speak to us? What do you mean? That guy actually had a lot to say. None of it good. Let me rephrase that. I meant why does he, doesn't he respond to our questions and taunting directly? He obviously has a lot to say, as Steve pointed out, and I'm certain he does so enjoy our plight. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think he has replied back. I'm positive that is not a true statement. Maybe he doesn't feel the need to. Leave us in the dark and all that. Yes, indeed. Not knowing is always worse than knowing, no matter how terrifying the answer may be. What are you guys talking about? Nothing of importance, Lucky. Well, nothing we can verify for certain, anyways. Oh. I see. Hey, isn't anyone gonna bring up these doors or what? Lucky lets out a shaky sigh. I was afraid someone would bring those up. Do we have to go right now? My nerves are shot. Can't we just rest for a while? Sorry, Lucky, but Steve over there is right. We can't afford to waste time. We could always leave you behind if you so choose. Kang, Jesus! Kang, that ain't funny. Well, not in these circumstances right now. You guys suck, like for real. Lucky pouts as he throws his hands into his pockets and looks down at the door. Don't you worry there, kiddo. Lucky slaps- look, Steve slaps Lucky rather hard on his back. You won't be left behind. You'll be going with me. Uh, what? You're one of the only ones here I trust. You're a good kid. Harmless. I mean, you work in tech, so you gotta be smart. Come on, you're with me this round. Um, alright, I guess that's okay with me. Steve swings his arm around Lucky's shoulders and drags him away. Lucky looks back at us for a second, but then he gets caught up in whatever Steve is saying. Well, it seems the selection process has already begun. Kang smiles while throwing his hands up in a frivolous manner. Personally, I could care less who I enter this next room with, though I would prefer it with, if it was with either. Though I would prefer if it was with either Bart or Pierce. Unfortunately, I can't be with you, Adam. Being versatile, you must take one for the team and can only select one of those bottoms. Such is life. Before he can say anything, Kang walks away to rejoin the guys. Steve and Lucky are already examining the doors. Maybe they're trying to figure out which one to choose? Oh man, what the hell have we gotten ourselves into? As I start walking over towards them, Vince turns around and waves me over. That rare smile peeking underneath his stash. I wish I could just stick with Vince, but with the way things are, I literally have no choice. Unless I make myself into the biggest asshole that ever lived. Maybe in the end, that's just what I'll have to do. I gotta make it out of here. There's still so much I want in life. And the world hasn't seen all I can do just yet. Everyone seems to be deep in conversation, but as I get close, everyone stops to face me. So, yup, you probably guessed it. We're trying to figure out who goes with whom. A deaf silence falls on them for a minute. It seems no final decisions have been made. Does it actually matter? Earl says rather dryly. Beats me, but probably not. So, I'll just be taking this fella right here? Pierce's eyes lock right on me and he moves his muscular arm to grab me by the waist. But Vince immediately jumps in. Adam can make his own choices. Whatever, dude. I don't see what the big deal is. No, it's, it's fine. I don't mind choosing. So my options are... Well, Bart is looking me almost dead in the eye, suddenly shaking his head side to side. Earl stares at me with car hard, cold, emotionless eyes. So yeah, the usual. And Pince Pierce was grinning earlier like he's about to have his dinner. I'll head on with... Oh, boy. Oh, no. Bart doesn't want me to go with him. That much is obvious. Uh, I don't want to go with Pierce. <laughs> so I guess I'll go with Earl. He didn't argue, but Earl didn't exactly look thrilled. Pierce, on the other hand, seemed disappointed, while Bart seemed relieved for some weird reason. Earl wordlessly strides over to Adam's side. 
Without looking at him directly, he utters in a hushed tone, So I'm not sure what you're trying to accomplish here by picking me, but what I said earlier in the drowning room still stands, so don't say I never warned you. Adam picking Earl seemed to set things in motion, since shortly after the remaining survivors start pairing up. Kang gleefully takes an unmoved Bart by the arm while Vince looks to Pierce and who shrugs. They eventually stand side to side to officially they eventually stand side by side to officially form their team. Gradually, all four pairs stand in front of a door. I don't think it matters which door we choose, so let's go for it. I look to Vince. Pierce and him nod at me. Next, Lutch, next Lucky catches my eye and waves. See you guys soon. Yeah, see you soon, Lucky. We'll all see each other soon. Yes, good luck to us all. Adam takes a deep breath and slowly opens the door ahead of them. Cautiously, Adam, followed by Earl, enter the usual tight, pitch-black hallway. While they walk, feeling along the walls to guide them, Earl must have walked a bit too quickly and bumps into Adam's back. Hey! Would you... Are you okay? Oh. I... Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Adam fumbles for Earl's hand and places it on his back. Earl pulls away slightly, but compromises by instead grasping onto the lower part of Adam's t-shirt. Hold on like that. It'll be easier. Thanks. This is a nice place. <laughs> ah! My eyes took a second to adjust to the bright- oh yeah, it is, like, bright white. To adjust to the brightness of the room. Adam winces while the door behind them shuts and then locks itself firmly. It wasn't even that it was that bright, but it was such a contrast to the blackness we stumbled in from. The room itself was decorated awesomely. All white, really expensive looking contemporary and modern furniture everywhere. See, when you describe it like that, it sounds douchey. <laughs> it makes me not want to like it anymore. The pure white floor was so glossy that it reflected back everything like a mirror. It reminded me of some of the lavish parties Vince and I would sometimes attend up in the Hollywood Hills. Okay. Despite that, there was something off about this room. This room. Earl looks around their new environment, seemingly half amazed, but the other half unsettled. This room makes me uneasy for some reason. I can't explain why. I mean, it's beautiful, but I just want to get the fuck out of here. I think I know how you feel. It's hard to place a finger on it. Hey, listen, by the way, thank you. Oh, for back there in the hallway? Don't worry about it, Earl. It's no big deal. No, I mean, even before that, for picking me as your partner earlier. Why didn't you pick Part? Or even Pierce? Because I didn't want to pick Pierce because he's creepy and Bart didn't want me to pick him. Why would you pick me? I offer him a confused but mainly warm smile. Why wouldn't I? His eyes light up and for the first time I could tell they were actually a very dark brown- Ah, That's cute! Maybe I was wrong about you, Adam. Uh, what the heck does that mean? It means I might just let you help me solve the mystery of this room. Well, good, because if you try to leave by yourself, we're all gonna die. Not if I solve it first. Hurry up, let's get to it. Okay, um, well, let's search then. North wall. Despite the room being beautifully decorated, it's still a little barren. The only thing that grabs my attention are the two frames hung up before me. A lucky clover with a three. And a flower with a two. Okay. West wall. I'll check out that wall to my left and see if there's anything suspicious. There's a frame with a dried flower on it. The flower is painted black. Oh, okay. So this is... So Daisy is one guess like a lily is two and then a clover is three this is also where the exit door is once again it has a keypad but D L C H D is crudely written above it in black paint okay okay D it's probably Daisy L maybe lily C is clover and then H is whatever Let's see what else is in the on the east wall. 
On the right wall, there's a weird spot where it looks like- Oh shit, we have to find the frame. A nail that was left tacked up proves it. Well, fuck. Let's look at the leather sofa. I start to search about the about the sofa cushions and underneath the sofa itself, but there's nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. Cowhide rug? I left the rug thinking there may be something underneath. Zilch. Okay. Hey, Adam. I wanted to tell you something. Those frames with the flowers in them. I could be wrong, but just hear me out. I think the puzzle has something to do with the number of petals each flower has. Okay. Okay, cool. I'll keep that in mind. I'm still looking around, but I'll let you know if I find anything. Alright, I'll do the same. So it's not the number underneath? Okay. Actually, the sofa, ha the sofa has a miniature safe built into the back of it. Wow. Type in the passcode. Press enter to submit. I don't know what the fucking passcode is. Okay, I got it. One, 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 uh, one. <laughs> it's too bad we can't just enjoy this experience, huh? I bet under nor normal circumstances it'd probably be fun. Yeah, I feel that. Okay. So... There's nothing underneath the rug. Maybe... So that's one, three, two? Maybe that's the... Maybe that's the sofa... The safe... One, three, two? There is only room for three. Damn it. He said something about the number of petals that each one has. Let me look at the west wall again. So this is one. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Okay. So this is eight. Eight, five, four. Damn it! Hmm. So there's a mini safe. Does that also have to do with the. I feel like I probably need something from the safe in order to to exit the room. Like, that seems most logical to me. So, and the only other clues we have are the flowers. Eight, four, five, maybe? Eight, four, five. Damn it. Um... Panic. I'm recording. <laughs> what? Hmm. Oh, that's not five, it's six. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Six, four. Yep. Yep. I'm dumb. Okay. Yes. 
Inside the mini safe is a scrap of paper that says Clover, da Clover Daisy Hibiscus Lily and another frame. Okay, so this is the lily. I think. Because the other one's probably hibiscus. Clover Daisy Hibiscus Lily. Okay. The lily has four petals. No, five. Okay. The lily has five petals. Hibiscus has six petals. Clover has four. Daisy has eight. Okay, let's solve it. Alright, I think I know how to solve this. Daisy, Lily, Clover, Hibiscus, Daisy. So, eight, five, four, six, eight. Eight, five, four, six, eight. Wait, what? Daisy, Lily, Clover, Hibiscus, Daisy. Maybe this is the Hibiscus and this is the Lily? Maybe I got that wrong. Okay, so... Eight, six, four, five, eight? Eight, six, four, five, eight. Okay, I just got them wrong. I did it! Excuse you, don't you mean we did it? <laughs> Sorry, I guess I got carried away. Yes, yes we did. Earl sweeps his hair and then lets out a puff of breath through his mouth. He stares intently into the next darkened hallway. Holy shit, I need to smoke. This is just way too much to handle. Hey, we're not doing that badly. I go to make a beeline for the door when Earl stops me. Wait, Adam, before we meet up with the others, there's something I should say. Maybe... maybe I was wrong about wanting to do this all on my own. I've always been fiercely independent. I used to firmly believe until recently that other people just slow you down. And if they, that if you want things to really happen and to change, you've got to make it happen yourself. Being a shark makes you strong, but they are also solitary creatures. It's probably a very lonely existence. Maybe that's why their eyes are so dark. They can't take in the light from what's beyond their own world. Or they're just marine mammals, that's kind of how all fish eyes are anyway. Earl. He nods and shrugs, his features softening into something quite warm and handsome for the first time ever. Oh. Uh smacks of that racism earlier. With a sense of accomplishment, we both walked confidently through the door. When we entered the foyer, we were the second pair to arrive. I didn't think it'd be such a big deal, but I was relieved to see the others had made it. Well, those who had arrived so far, anyways. We talked for a bit, stood around, some sitting on the card floor. I decided it was best to chill for a minute when we had the chance. Unfortunately, relaxing wasn't a luxury we could afford. Minutes seemed to tick away, but with a loaded gravity of hours. Either they had all been excited, speaking with relief and congratulations. Earlier, they had all been excited, speaking with relief and congratulations, as each pair showed up shortly after the other. Lucky and Steve, however, oh no, had not yet surfaced after what felt like a considerable amount of time by comparison to the rest. That unease replaced whatever feelings of exuberance the group once had. Do not make me lose Lucky! The clamoring had now succumbed to a restless silence. How long do you think it's been? Long enough, I'm afraid. It's felt like at least half an hour since we all regrouped here. I think we might need to have a conversation. Wait, hold on. What exactly are you referring to here, King? A long, intentional, pregnant pause soon followed. Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. No, I'm not an idiot. I just want to be clear about what you're suggesting. Are you saying we should leave them? That we should leave Steve and Lucky? 
It's not like they won't be able to continue on without us. Steve is a top, Lucky is a bottom. Why should we imperil ourselves when most likely they're fine? I'm certain, granted that the roles were reversed, they would have also continued on without us. How dare you? That is not cool. You don't get to assume how either of them might feel, especially since you're obviously twisting things so you can get your way. <laughs> is it that obvious, Boo? My, my, looks like I need to work on my powers of persuasion a bit more. Fuck you. Venom is almost dripping from Earl's words. Hey, 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 stop. I'm not the one yelling. Kang says this while leaning up against a wall. It almost appears like he's enjoying this confrontation. And you, Earl, above all other people, I didn't think you'd be the sentimental type. I'm not. Well, I'm simply speaking the cold hard truth. What if they never show up? Or indeed, what if they had already gone through one of these doors before us? Look, I know what you're saying, Kang, but I don't like have to I don't like having to wait around here any more than you do. But but I think we gotta stay and wait for him. It's the right thing to do. The honorable thing to do. This is just a game, but if you really want to get into it, what's honor in the face of survival? He thinks it's still a game. He's not convinced that, like, they're actually in danger. Is honor a shield? Is it a life jacket? Can it save your life, Bart? Ask yourself that. It hasn't even really been that long. Earl, you have a watch, don't you? How long's it been? Oh my god, Earl, you totally slipped your mind, but it slipped my mind, but yeah, it's true. You're the only one here that has a watch, I think. Everybody else has their phones, and those were taken away at reception. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry, I, I totally forgot. I've just been so damn worked up lately, it hadn't occurred to me. Let's see. So if we were promised nine hours, we should have seven hours left. Plenty of time. I'm sure those jokers will be stumbling into this foyer any minute now. I say we wait. Hmm. I don't believe those words will comfort you when you're struggling down to the last few minutes to solve a puzzle. We should stay. Of course I have to make the decision. Adam, what do you think? Nope. No one looks gets left behind. I'm sorry. I agree with Barton Earl. I think we should all wait for each other no matter what. I've straightened myself out further before I make my next point. But it isn't right for any of us to make decisions for the whole if some of you don't agree. Personally, for me, I'm gonna wait for them. But I can't stop those of you who want to go out ahead. Kang and Pierce's eyes not notably change and shift. Before anything else. I have something else to say. Well, Steve isn't here. What is it, Vince? Adam. It's about this letter. What are you guys talking about? I looked at Vince. I wasn't sure if this was the best time to bring that up. But I suppose we couldn't go back on it now that it was brought up. Well... Vince stared at me with a blank expression. God, he's expecting me to explain even though he brought it up? I sighed heavily, not knowing what else to do in the moment. Everyone was staring at me, and I know I should say something soon before people start to panic. Alright, well, when we were all in the drowning room, we all showed our letters, right? Well, it might not be a huge deal, but Steve refused to show his to Vince and I. That's weird. Then again, he's a weird sort of dude. Kinda looks like a pedophile if you ask me. Okay, Pierce. That's not the point. Huh? So what is it then? I don't get it. I mean, I just think his behavior has been shifty, but otherwise I don't see anything too wrong with it. I just wish the dude was more open and honest about it. No! Vince's sudden yell made us jump. I've never heard him sound so commanding before. Don't you see? What if he's versatile? Like, he lied about what he got in the letter? It's a huge advantage. Why else would he hide it? That fucking old asshole creep! The other men stood silent and motionless like irate statues. Only their gazes moved, each looking at each other with a hint of something akin to aggression. I don't like it. Look, it might not mean anything, maybe. One of the doors behind us starts to fidget open. I looked to the rest of the group and put my finger up to my mouth to shush them all. I didn't want anyone to bring up the Steve thing right now. 
We don't need this drama. Thank God! Oh, my baby is safe. Oh my God. Lucky and Steve literally become stumbling in, mostly because Lucky was so anxious to burst into the room. He had the biggest smile on his face that I could imagine, and surprisingly, given that I just met him, I was really happy to see him. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I was so happy that I knocked the microphone. I'm so happy to see you, baby! Oh! Oh, poor Lucky. Really happy and relieved to see they were both okay. Hey! We made it, everyone! Uh, sorry we took so long. We had some problems solving the puzzles in our room. Lucky gives an embarrassed grin, like a kid caught with his hand in the cookie jar. I didn't expect it to be so hard either, but it's okay now and we're finally here so you can wipe those tears from your eyes. Break out the wine. Why do you guys look so serious? Well, we were just worried, that's all. We all got here about the same time and you guys were lagging. Um, I think it was my fault. He raises his hand. I may have kept coming up with complicated solutions to the puzzles. It's okay, kid. That's an understatement, Lucky. If we just kept it simple, we would have gotten the answers a lot quicker. But, but I just kept thinking that there's no way the answers could have been that easy. It'll probably get harder as we go on. There had to be more to them, but I, now I know how they work. Next time we'll do better. Is it bad when that statement makes me more worried? I know, for someone named Lucky, I'm just not very lucky at all, am I? I burst out laughing, and so did Steve and Lucky. Soon, most of the guys were at least chuckling. I may have even caught Bart holding back a laugh or two. It was a pretty rare moment, but it was nice to see us all laughing for a change. I knew this moment wouldn't last, but it was a good distraction, even for just a little while. Soon after, I heard Kang pipe up. So, Steve, tell us about these puzzles that bamboozled the likes of you two geniuses. I'd be delighted, Kang. Steve says rather slightly. Did yours also involve statues? As Steve walks over to play storyteller to a captive audience, Lucky motions for Adam to speak in private. Happily! They end up moving away from the group, though not too far off that it'd be noticeable or suspicious. So how are you, Adam? I'm glad to see you're alright. Me too. I was seriously worried though. Well, that's nice of you, but I'm pretty sure you're just saying that. By the way, did your puzzles involve white statues too? No, we had to deal with frames that had dried flowers in them. I was a bit creeped out in there. I know what you mean. Anyway, sorry, I I'm sure you wanted to hear Steve's story, but I need to talk to you for a sec. You sure, Lucky, what's up? Um, well... Lucky hesitates and proceeds to fidget with the piercings in his ear. I don't know if you'll believe me, but I wasn't sure who else to talk to. I don't want to be Steve's partner anymore, or again. It, it's not like anything happened, and I can't really explain why, but I don't feel safe when I'm alone with him. You serious? I give Lucky a reassuring but concerned look. Did he say or do anything to hurt you? No, 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 no nothing like that. I just... I get a bad feeling when I'm around him, the way he looks at me. Do, do you believe me, Adam? I mean... I'm not gonna tell you you're wrong. Of course. Thank goodness. I was afraid to bring it up. I thought you might call me crazy. Don't worry about it. I got you covered. Just then, I see Earl slowly edging his way over to us. His eyes were questioning with just a hint of concern. What are you guys talking about? Uh, well... It's okay, Lucky. Do you mind if I tell him? No, I trust Earl too. Lucky doesn't want to be partnered with Steve anymore. What? Why not? I did my part, so I shoot Lucky a look with my eyebrows raised, encouraging him to go on. Well, Earl, I... I don't feel safe with him. I explained to Adam it's not like he did or said anything bad to me, but I definitely don't feel comfortable with him. He makes me anxious and nervous. That's all. I don't know if I fully trust him either now. Earl looks at me, implying what he said is based on this and the info Vince gave out about Steve hiding his letter. I'll go with him, into the next room. No, you can't! I'd feel bad! You just said you didn't want to go into the next room with him, right? And this solves that. Besides, and no offense, Lucky, but he isn't going to be able to pull a, pull a fast one on me. I can take him. I'm going to watch him like a hawk. I bet you can take him, Earl. Kick his ass. Or a shark. 
I see this unsure if it'll go over well, but wanting to lighten the mood. Or shark. Yeah. You do that for me? But why? I can't forget what you said in there just after Lars. Lars. Well, let's just say I've been thinking a lot recently. Maybe I don't have to be part of the group, but I can still do the right thing when times call for it. So I'm not doing it necessarily because of how I feel about you, and in that way no one can say I'm going back on my word. Lucky and I smile at each other. Ugh, god, what have I gotten myself into? Thank you, Earl. Sure thing. Earl, what's wrong with your face? I was smiling at him. <laughs> yeah, gross, it doesn't suit you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both for understanding and helping me out. Sure thing, buddy! And if we manage to get out of here alive, I, I hope we'll all stay friends and hang out together. When we get out of here alive. I'm sure. Hanging out sounds like it'd actually be kind of cool. Same here. To be honest, I'm not totally- Hey! Hey! Adam! What a dick! You shallow asshole! Wow. Hey, you can go into the next room with me, okay, Lucky? Are you sure, Adam? That'd be awesome! Actually, I'd be okay with anyone else, just as long as I don't have to go in with... You missed a fantastic story! Quite the comedy of errors, if I may be so bold to say. Anyhow, seeing as we've wasted enough time, I went ahead and picked Bart as my companion for the next room. I figured since Adam, you got to pick first last time, you wouldn't object. Yeah, that's fine, I don't care. Perfect! We're all going to start pairing off again, so you best hurry! Well, that settles it then. I'm going to butter up Steve and make some lame excuse why we should be partners this time. You guys be safe, okay? Lucky, Lucky grins gently at me with a huge look of relief on his face. I held up my hand to give him a high five, but he looks unsure of what it meant. <laughs> I will protect him with my life. Oh yeah! We finally awkwardly high five. Okay, so Kang roped in Bart, Earl with Steve, and I know Vince will just take whoever I didn't pick. Ooh, that means Pierce. I'm sorry, Vince. Hey, I don't want to head in with your main man, Pierce. I'm not into you, buddy. I promise it'll be worth your time, wink wonk. No. I'm not gonna just drop Lucky, are you serious? That's bullshit. Sorry man, I had a promise to Lucky here just before you came by. Maybe next time. Nope. I hope Pierce wasn't upset by the- Honestly, we're trying to survive here. If he's really that upset that he wasn't able to, like, fuck me in a murder room, then he can- he can go fuck himself, okay? But I am glad you picked me anyways. As we moved to the doors, it seemed the rest of the group had organized themselves without us. Like in a sick game show, contestants Steve and Earl stood in front, stood in front of mysterious door number one. Although no one's winning a car in this night nightmarish game. Steve didn't seem to mind or be suspicious about the sudden change in partners. Maybe he figured we'd be switching every round? Anyways, the only door left was door number two, which Lucky and I step in front of. Beside us to the right, in front of Lucky door number three, stood Bart and Kang. Bart stood there rigid with his arms folded as usual, his large frame dwarfing Kang's. They made a very well-dressed couple, it seemed. I grinned ironically at the thought. And finally, Vince and Pierce at door number four. As Adam was the first to open his door, a serious and focused hush came over the entire assembly. With less parting words than last time, Adam and Lucky stepped cautiously into the hallway towards their next puzzle room. Oh, this is... frightening. I'm getting some, like, serious Silent Hill vibes from this music. What in the world? They entered an impossibly large-seeming cavern of a room. Adam and Lucky simply stood unmo unmoving, jaws agape at the sight before them. There was a distinctly alien feeling about the place. Particles of dust glimmer and catch light as they waft about, being carried by a cool breeze of unknown origins. It was hard to explain, but this room felt alive. 
Lucky, illuminated by, by neon lights, turned to face Adam. Whatever confidence he seemed to have in the room before had been wiped away. Adam, I know we can pull this off. We just have to make a great team. Just look at this place, though. What kind of puzzle would he have us solve in a room like this? There isn't anything here. Well, we both know that can't be true. There's gotta be something around here we can use. Some clues lying about. Yeah, slimy, me. Of course you're right. Okay, um, I have an idea. I'll look for the exit door, since it isn't obvious where it is this time. You start looking for clues, and once I find the exit door, I'll come help you right away, okay? That sounds like a decent plan, Luxter. Awesome. Um, do you think we'll hear from the host guy while we're in here? Don't get me wrong, I'm glad we have it. But it does seem weird that we haven't heard from him at all since the first boss room. That is weird. You know what? It bothers me too. I don't dig the idea that the freak is just sitting around in his goat mask with a microphone watching everything we do. Besides, I know if we did hear from it, it would definitely be something bad. But for real, we need to focus on the puzzle at hand. It's just a little weird, that's all. Though I agree, we gotta focus on the puzzle first. I grip Loki firmly by the shoulder and nod with a determined look in my eyes. We, we can do this. Of course we can, little bud. Whatever doubts I had, I needed to hide them from Lucky and keep tough. I had the feeling he could be strong, but only if the only other person supports him enough. It's okay, bud. It's okay, man. You didn't ask for this. Otherwise, he'd crumble pretty fast. I'm really glad I got to be in here with you, Adam. You're patient, smart, determined, and on top of that, you're really handsome. To be honest, when I first met you, I was a little intimidated to even say hello. You really have it all, you know? You have that special something. <laughs> You'll be a rad performer someday. Thanks, Lucky. That means a lot. Lucky spins around with renewed vigor and dashes off into the darkness to locate the exit. Adam surveys the area one more time with keen, determined eyes. Let's fucking rock this. Okay. Um... Let's look at the triangle. I walk towards and get mesmerized by that curious triangle. For some reason, it makes me want to put my guard up. Just underneath it, against the wall, there's a safe with a keypad on it. Written above the keypad is blank blank K. Fuck. <laughs> okay, so I don't I don't know what it is. One 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 one. Um, the floor. In a section of the floor near one of the walls with lights, I find a message made of neon light. 994. Okay. Um. Using the lights as a guide, I find myself at one of the corners. There's a small message made with light here. CMYK. Key is 4. It's cyan, magenta, yellow, something. Uh, plus, plus. Oh, key is four. So cyan, magenta, yellow, key. Key is four. Okay. I have to write this shit down. This is definitely a clue. What does it mean? Red, green, blue... Okay. I'm surprised to find nothing out of the ordinary here. I was sure I'd find something. Let's search it again. Hmm. Sweet, I found a clue. Two, five, six. So do I have to write down which numbers are like red and blue and which ones are pink? I know it like totals up the stuff and things at the end, but I. Okay. So there's. I think that counts as a red two, and then a green five, then a purple six. Pink triangle. It does kind of freak me out that the symbol of this thing is a pink triangle. Like, I don't know if they did that on purpose, but Jesus Christ. Red, 
to green five. And then a pink six. I love the music in this room though. So a yellow nine, a green nine, and then a blue four. RGB. Oh, one of these greens is a cyan. I think it's the first one. Blank, blank, K. So it's 664. Yes! Yeah! Yes! <laughs> huh, I can't believe I got it. There's nothing inside the mini safe except for a business card. Crit shop. Okay, let's write this down. Lucky! Hey Adam, guess what? You'll be really happy with me. I found the exit! The keypad has some sort of message puzzle thing above it though? Oh no. Print the rainbow. 28Z, 3A, 4B, 5C. Um, maybe I'm supposed to use the colors that I had before? But red is two. Betoikle. You know, just go to the Betoikle. <laughs> uh, but that's a passcode! <laughs> So why did we get the letters? So, two, eight, nine, nine, four, two, six. Yes! Fuck yeah! Oh, I, yes! We got it! Lucky turns around and gives me a big, oh. What the fuck? The lights had powered down and suddenly lights had turned on in the two rooms to either side of us. Lucky and I turn our heads to see Steve in the room to our left with a look of fucking horror. Why can we see him? It must have been some kind of two-way mirror? Adam, look! I look over and notice that Steve is actually screaming. If I focused, I could hear his muffled cries through the glass. Fuck! Lucky, come on! Lucky and I run over to the left side of the room to check on them. Oh... No, Earl! No! My blood ran cold. I could hear Lucky screaming beside me. At first it was clear, but as seconds went on his screams became muffled like he was underwater. My vision blurred in and out and darkened. I was afraid I was going to faint, and I felt instantly sick to my stomach. Earl laid face first on the floor, blood gushing out of what remained of his head. It oozed out and sometimes spewed out irregularly. When that happened, bubbles tricked out of his face and danced on the growing pool of blood. No! No, please! Oh my god, no! From my peripheral, I could see Lucky had stopped screaming and was sobbing uncontrollably. His hand slid down on the glass as his knees gave in. He slowly slid down against the wall until his knees hit the floor. I, on the other hand, couldn't even move. I barely breathed. Instead, look from Earl and then at Steve. How could this happen? What happened? Why is this happening? Steve and I make contact. 
our make eye contact. Our pupils burn into each other's. She looks at me, then at Earl, and back to me, panicked. He raises his hands, palm forward and up to his chest, and I could tell he was trying to say, I didn't do it. Oh, shit. Bart! Kang! Oh, no. I was in a trance. Like a zombie, I walked backwards and away from Steve's room without even acknowledging his pleas. I turned around and ran to the right side of our room, desperately wanting but not wanting to find out how Bart and Kang were. Oh, no. Empty. They weren't there. Shit, no one is in there. My mind raced to the possibilities of what could have happened to them and to Earl. Adam? Lucky's shrill cry snapped me out of it. What's going on? What the hell is going on? Why is Earl dead? Are Bart and Kang okay? I don't know, man. Holy shit. I gripped my forehead in a sound bent. All I know is Earl is dead. Bart and Kang, I don't know. They're, they aren't there. They aren't in their room. What? There doesn't seem to be signs of a struggle, though. Maybe they're okay. I can't believe this is happening, Adam. I don't want this anymore. I don't. I don't. I don't. Lucky is shaking violently. But, but at least maybe Bart and Kang made it out of their room. Maybe they're waiting for us. Let's go, Adam. I'm scared. Yeah, you're right. Fuck. Okay, um... Let's get out of here. We gotta find out what happened to Earl. We gotta talk to Steve. But one thing I want you to do, Lucky, be careful. We talk to, but we keep our distance from Steve, alright? At least until we figure out what's going on. Do you really think he'd do this to Earl? Why? Why would he want to hurt one of us? It doesn't make sense. I think even Lucky had calmed down a little, but the feeling was replaced with something even more awful. The adrenaline had faded now into something that just gave us the cold shivers. Tears were welling up in my eyes from sadness, but also from intense fear. Poor Earl. I'd never experienced anything like it before. Come on, Lucky, let's go. Alright. When we walked in, I held my breath only to find we didn't see Bart, Kang, or even Steve yet. Oh, shit. So it was just Lucky, me, Pierce, and Vince in the foyer for now. I bet Steve is just as nervous of us as I am of him and whatever shit is about to go down. My nerves felt shot and I could feel myself forcibly subduing this deep trembling. Vince! Adam, you made it. Yeah, dude, are you okay? Yeah, we're fine. Why wouldn't we be? Vince tilts his head and smiles, a particularly cute expression that one wouldn't expect from such a built man. Have you seen Barter Kang? Vince gives Adam a concerned look, obviously sensing there was more behind the question than mere curiosity. Uh, no? Why? Something's up. I clench my fists tightly, unsure of where to start. The others came around us solemnly, so I started explaining everything. It felt like I was babbling, but the words just flowed out like a river, and I couldn't stop them. I explained what we saw, that Bart and Kang had vanished, but Earl was butchered in the room with Steve. When I finished talking, I gulped so hard, it almost wouldn't go down, and I felt like I could have choked or spat it out. Vince. Vince walked away from Adam wordlessly. It's true that Vince wasn't an expressive, talkative sort, but this was not that. His lack of words could only be the result of shock and other hopelessness. Vince walked to the wall furthest away. With his back turned to them all, he raised both his arms up and placed his hands palm down against it, his head resting on the back of his hands, lost in thought and sadness. Lucky was sobbing quietly, but anyone could tell he was holding back the floodgates. Pierce shook his head and pulled down his cap as usual. And resting both his hands on his sides, he looks to the ground, avoiding all eye contact, even with Adam. I still can't believe that Ernest is dead. He was a dick, though, let's be straight. He always struck down to me, even from the start. Pierce, now isn't the time, man. Looking down his nose at me like his shit didn't stink. Shut up! Just shut up, Pierce! You know what I think? He was right to look down on you, because you're an idiot and an asshole! And this just proves it. What did you say, bitch? Come on, say it again, you punk-ass little shit. 
I expected Lucky to back down, but surprisingly, he stood his ground, and a determination took over that I never thought he could have. Are you- Oh, Lucky. I don't want to say that word. I SAID SHUT UP! First of all, his name is Earl, and not Ernest. You don't get to talk about the dead that way, especially not him. You wouldn't know, but he was kind. And even though he hit it, he actually cares about people. Unlike you. You think you could pick on me because I'm small and fat or something? Lucky was trembling by this point. I, I know what I am. But you know what you are? You would be nothing without those muscles. Because your brain is full of nothing but air and bullshit. That's it. Pierce fucking growls, pushes past me, and raises his fist, aiming dead on Lucky's face. Whoa, 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 stop it. Holy shit. Thank god I was able to jump into, in between them at the last minute and keep Pierce at bay. My hands pressed on his massive chest. Pierce, stop. D do it! You think I'm scared of you? Out of the corner of my eye, I see Vince storming over to us. I'd never seen him look so pissed off. Stop now, both of you. <sighs> you know, that name does suit you. Pierce says it lucky. You're only lucky that Adam and Pierce are here. Adam and Vince are here. Pity you enough to protect him and let you piggyback off him. Otherwise, your pathetic ass wouldn't have made it this far, and you'd be as dead as Earl. Enough. Lucky stands there defiant, but tears are welling up in his eyes. He rubs them away, but doesn't take his gaze off of Pierce's. This must wait. We have bigger problems. Totally. Vince, have Bart and Kang been through here? Do you think they took off before you guys got here? Not sure. Maybe they could've. I don't feel like Bart is the kind of man to do that. But Krang would've. Can't exactly argue with that, really. I hope they're okay, though. Adam? Did Steve kill Earl? I, I don't know. I mean, sure, it looks bad. But it makes no sense. Why would he kill him? He has no reason to. Does he need a reason? He's a creep. He's probably the fucking killer. Obviously, I don't agree with Pierce on much, but I do find Steve, Steve suspect. I mean... I told you, Adam, how I when I felt how when I was his partner, I felt something off about him. He scares me. The way he looks at you when you're alone with him, I can't explain it. It's different when he's in a group. I swear. There you have it. We don't know for sure. We can't make any decisions until we let him explain his side of things. Whoa. Oh God, no, no, no. Nah, why now? A gift from me to you! The voice from the PA vanishes as quickly as it appeared, leaving the men weary and confused. Suddenly, they noticed this forer was equipped with eight assorted TV screens, as all of them simultaneously sprang to life. What the hell is this? The men split up and moved to a different screen each. Each screen seemed to be a feed of their various phones and other personal digital media. I heard Lucky gasp, and Vince, who was at the screen closest to me, was shaking his head. He seemed pretty disturbed. I was afraid of what Goatman was forcing us to view. With a sense of dread, one by one, we all went through and watched, looked at each and every screen. Okay. Um, this is Adam's, like, Instagram account? New York to LA, 6'3", model mayhem, misfit, actor, personal trainer, motivational speaker. I am the original Adam. Let's all stay cool, people, okay? Um. <laughs> it's, it's Bart's, like, Tinder profile, or his grinder profile. Online one mile away. White six three bear. Advocate for LGBT here. A bit too political for my own good. I love you, Bart. Just don't disagree with me, and we'll get along just fine. That said, I go for men whose brains are as big as their brawn. I tend to go for furry, big and tall, burly, bearded guys like me. Just another lumber, just another lumberjack looking for his logging partner. I knew he was a lumberjack. Oh, 
Um... Earl. Hi guys, I'm Earl, and as I'm sure you've gathered, I'm an architect living my dream in, in Los Angeles. Hoping to find someone to share that dream with someday. Right now I'm open to casual dating, but keep in mind keep my mind open to the possibility of a long-term relationship. You, strong inside, on the outside is a plus. Funny and secure with yourself. Of course you have a shirtless picture. I'm looking for a fit, friendly guy seeking fun, perhaps more. Not here for endless chat. I know that I want to pounce. I know what I want and pounce. Let's grab a sophisticated drink at a local hot spot. Scruffy, muscular, very hairy, chested, masculine, tall, and professional guys usually grab my attention, but I'm open-minded, so try me. Hi, hey, Lucky. Why, hello there! I'm a simple guy with simple likes. I'm pretty new to this online dating thing. So far, I've made a few friends, but nothing romantic has come from this yet. If you like cuddling and watching anime on web flicks and busting out the video games, please contact me. I'm not into the WeHo scene. Sorry, guys. Wait! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Oh, it says- it says he's into trans. Is he trans? Is Lucky trans? Because holy shit! I- I sh- I- oh, I hope- oh. Oh, baby. Be my friend. I'll take you up for ice cream. God, Pierce. Just checking this out to keep your drama away. Lifting partners are cool. 24 fit 7 fitness in WeHo. If I don't IM you back, it means I'm not interested. Hit me up without a face pic. Blocked. I want NSA fun with hot muscular white guys. Don't waste my time if you're femme, total bottom, or unfit. Okay. No fats, no femmes, no Asians. Hey Vince. I like to work out and act. Friends say I'm introverted, but I'm just shy. I open up to good people that I feel comfortable with over time. I like men who are confident, try to take care of themselves, and have a vision for the future. Please don't call me daddy or send me naked pics. Say hi. Like I said, I can be shy. Steve is a porn star, is what that last screenshot was. It was a screenshot of a porn site with, uh, Steve in the, uh, in the pictures. That's- I would not have expected that from him, but whatever. You guys, there's a reason why he's showing us this. Why he- why would he be showing us all our dating profiles off Swold? How embarrassing. Swold is a gate, yep, it's basically grinder. It's a fast and easy way to find a hookup, and that's originally what it was meant for. Though, Adam, he showed us your now, Graham. Yeah, I don't get it. He could have shown my swole profile. Why is mine different than all the ra Well, I mean, it's different from Steve's, too, because Steve's was a literal porn site. Vince didn't say anything, but I could tell he was worried for me. I felt it, too. I'm unsure why, but I'm in danger. I'm being targeted here, and I don't know what any of this, this has to do with me. Dude, yours wasn't the only one who was, was different, you know? Did you see Steve's phone? Holy shit, yeah, that last one. The guy's a porn star. More like porn director who puts himself into scenes he films. Guys, I knew I'd seen him somewhere before. His stuff is all over the internet. Uh, you know, those free porn search engine sites. He flies to different, well, Asian countries like Thailand, Cambodia and stuff, and then pays locals to be filmed having sex with him. So that's his MO, huh? Yeah, usually third world poor Asian countries. He probably takes advantage of how far the American dollar goes there. Oh. He told me he was a documentarian. <laughs> well, the guy wasn't really lying, I guess. But it's more dishonesty. I knew I had a bit feeling about Steve. Well, this shit here is probably why. 
He's obviously one of those weird fucking white guys who's into Asians, but like in a weird fetishy way. You mean like how you're not into Asians in a weird fetishy way? I bet he tried- oh. And during the struggle, ended up bashing his face in. Hey, we can't prove that. I hate to say it, but even if Steve's innocent, there will be five of us. As soon as Vince said that, it dawned on all of us. Oh my god. Someone has to get left behind. Oh shit. No matter what. Well fuck, it's a no-brainer, right? We dropped Steve. I never thought I'd say it, but I agree. Guys, we can't do this. Can you imagine how you'd fucking feel if it was happening to you? Adam. Vince places this comforting hand on my shoulder. It's numbers. We can't argue the numbers. We have no choice. Even if Steve didn't kill Earl, he is the most untrustworthy. It, it's the logical decision. Vince hangs his head. Well, I'm sure as hell not gonna let you guys leave me behind. I'll tell you that much. Uh, you guys would never do this to me, would you? I'm sorry, but I say we leave Steve. For our own safety. Oh boy. Um. Well, there's five, not including Bart and Ken, because we still don't know where they are. I'm gonna. Okay, so they showed us the porn site to show that Steve takes advantage of people and that he's dishonest. He has shit to hide. Honestly, though, if I'm thinking from a perspective of trying to keep the peace, I would leave behind Pierce. Because Pierce is much more likely to stir shit up. He doesn't seem to take this seriously. He's kind of a dick. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that he deserves death. But we have no actual proof that Steve killed Earl. get out of this place alive. But shit, this is a good story. I love the- I love the fucking, um... Like, the, the writing is really good. I kinda wish, um... Like, words like the R word didn't come up so much. Or, like, mentions of sexual assault. Just personally. But, I mean... Other than that, I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying these characters. Like, the puzzles are really good. So, um, thank you guys so much for watching and for checking me out. I will leave a link to this game and the dev content information in the description. And I hope you have a great week. Or weekend. Whatever. Later. <laughs>